one. Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to KLJN 107.7, the hottest, coolest radio station on the net. 107.7, KLJN. Keep God first in your walk, baby, and that's bona fide talk. Bonafide talk. Welcome to Bonafide Talk, family, one of the hottest Christian radio broadcasts in the country. I am your host, the neighborhood evangelist, Evangelist Falana. You are listening to Bonafide Talk Live, baby, on the award-winning KLJN 107.7 radio network, the hottest and the coolest radio station on the net, and that, my friend, is definitely some Bonafide Talk. Family, let us go into prayer. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I petition the third realm of heaven. And I thank you, Lord God, in advance that you are Jehovah Shiel, the Lord of wealth. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Father, I thank you that you are El Shaddai, the all-supplying God. Father, I thank you for the multiple streams of income that's coming in now. Father, I thank you even the more, God, that you always have a ram in the bush that you supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you that as we have given, it is now being given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father, that it's being given unto our lap. Father, I thank you the wealth and riches lies in the four walls of our home. Father, I thank you even the more that the wealth of the wicked is not just stored up for um, in heaven, but is now into our bank accounts, our savings accounts now in the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Vicky, for that wonderful prayer. Our feature guest is no doubt one of the best in business, from television to radio, from YouTube to multiple film credits to live concerts. His resume is quite extensive. Producer of several internet, radio, and television programs. But make no mistake, there is more to our feature guest than entertainment. He is also a civil rights and human rights activist. From the federal agency, he received the Deputy Commissioner's Award for establishing a national podcast for a federal government agency. From the Office of Civil Rights and Equal Opportunity, our featured guest was awarded the Executive Director's Award for establishing a national podcast for training regional managers on civil rights issues in the federal government. One of his current projects revolves around educating listeners and viewers about diabetics and preventative care to avoid getting diabetes. Let's listen to his trailer on diabetics. It's entitled, The Big Secret About Living with Dirty Diana. We are producing this documentary to inform, educate, and save you and your loved ones from an untimely death or financial burdens. This short film is about diabetes. I call her Dirty Diana, a.k.a. Dirty. She doesn't care if you're rich or poor. She doesn't care if you're a man or a woman, a grandmother or a mother, a preacher or a teacher, or a wife or a husband. 
She comes when she wants to. You can be three months old or 65 years old. She doesn't care. She is worse than the devil. She gets in you like a virus and treats everybody different. She will punish you with pain, steal from you, and you will wish you were dead. Yes, she will make you think unpleasant thoughts like taking your life or eating yourself to death. She will give you a slow death or a long death. She will love you by covering you with pain. She will steal your money, your children, your husband or wife, and end your life. You can't love her back. But she will stay with you for better or worse in life or death. I call her Diana, but tonight I will call her dirty. 29.1 million people in the United States have diabetes, but 8.1 million may be undiagnosed and unaware of their condition. About 1.4 million new cases of diabetes are diagnosed in the United States every year. More than one in every 10 adults who are 20 years or older has diabetes. It was February 27, 2017. Estimated 366 million people around the world have diabetes, or about 5.2% of the global population. There are 4.6 million diabetes-related deaths each year. Approximately 1.25 million American children and adults have type 1 diabetes. According to the International Diabetes Federation, IDF, 187 million of them do not even know they have diabetes. Thank you, and I hope you support this film. It's so simple. She sees you, she needs you, but it's so hard. He is the founder of Positive Power 21. Yes, he is. Can you feel the power? (laughs) Bonafide Talk family, let's welcome Brother Jerry Royce onto the show. Hello, Brother Jerry. How are you doing this evening, sir? What's going on, my sister? How you doing? It's doing good. It's doing good. Welcome to Bonafide Talk. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for having us. We're so glad to be here. God bless them. God bless America. How is the... (laughs) Yes, indeed. How is the family? Everybody's fine. They're all cozy and doing their own thing. Everybody just getting there from school and work, so we're chilling. Did you get your Christmas tree up yet? Well, we don't have the inside done yet, but I got the outside done when I was talking to you. It was, it was just cleaning up. So it's all done outside. Of course, my wife is going to go out there and she's going to change things around. But, you know, that's what it is. That's what y'all do. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I tell you what, you've gotten a lot further than I have. I am way behind, way behind. Brother Jerry, would you like to give some quick shout out? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to shout out to my to my manager, Dr. Trinnell, and shout out to, to my family, of course, uh, my family on the eastern shore of Maryland and Baltimore. Of course, my cousin uh, Karen is probably listening right now. And also shout out to uh, Dr. Paul Kelly and all the podcasters that, that join me weekly. Thank you so much for being part of Positive Power Double XI. You do many things, Brother Gerald. What is a normal day like for you? Wow, you know, it starts uh, about 5 o'clock in the morning. I get my daughter up, make sure she's ready so she can get her ride to school. And then I take the dog out for a walk. We take a little walk, maybe 15-minute walk, get in. And I may lay down for a little bit just to get myself together. And I'm um, basically checking social media, see what's going on, and, and getting ready for my government job. And then when we leave there, normally, you. you know, uh, come in. I make sure you know the kids are fed. Cause my wife, she tends to come in a little later because she's a workaholic. So uh, I take make sure the kids are fine. Try to get my thirty minutes in with the kids, and um, and then I'm I'm down in the studio probably about eight o'clock. You know, getting ready for the next show, and that's every day. <laughs> what do What do you do in your downtime, or do you have any downtime? That's hectic. Yes, yes, I do have downtime. Uh, downtime for me is. My son and I, both my sons, and some and the puppy, sitting around watching the Baltimore Ravens throw down on Sundays, good or bad. That's what we do. We enjoy watching football, and if it's not football season, um, we like going for long walks. My son and I, we actually train for uh, 5K marathon races, and that was something him and I did together. Mm-hmm. Both my kids run track, so I, I look forward to hanging out in the spring watching them run. And also my nephew runs also, so that's three events I have to go to during the spring. My daughter's running indoor right now, so I'll be downtown um, probably once a week 
I'm watching her. So, um, yeah, that's, and exercise. Oh. I love exercising. So I do, I do work out a lot. I work out a lot. That's a good thing. Now, Brother Jerry, I was in awe when I read your EPK. The first thing that came to mind was, wow. The second thing that came to mind was, what makes this brother tick? Like, what? at what point did you decide that your passion was for the arts, amongst other things? Well, you know, growing up, my dad was an artist. And you, you tend to, you know, follow your, your parents' journey. You know, they pretty much showing you the ropes. Um, just like... You know, any small village, you know, you know, got men there as your role model. You want to tend to pick the guy that's going to stand out the most. And in my case, it was my dad. He was basically a role model for his eight, eight, seven or eight siblings. So um, basically, my dad was an artist while he was in the armed forces. Um, that was his thing. I took it up. I had a love for superheroes. And uh, so I was into graphics for a very long, for a very young age. And then I moved into science. My mom was a science teacher. So I kind of combined art with science. Okay. Okay. I see. So that's where you get the name Batman from? I yeah. see that a lot on your profile. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, he don't have no real superpowers, but but he's rich and uh, he's very intelligent and he's very innovative. And he spends a lot of time, you know, thinking of his next, you know, his next move. And that's that's me, you know, up late. He is very strategic. Right. And a lot of people don't really know. And, and that's you. Yes, that's me. And, and what a lot of people don't know about bats, bats, bats are really for mankind. They're, they're kind of like um the Almost, almost the same as a bumblebee, except for they pollinate at nighttime. They actually help pollinate our plants, and they eat mosquitoes, and they they do they feed on fruits. So they're vegetarians. A lot of people think they feed on blood, but there's only one or two species that actually feed on blood, and they actually help the cattle. They only feed on cattle, and it's not like it's a whole lot, you know. So there's a lot of science behind that. I never knew that. Yes, I never knew that about that. Yeah, and, they, and they're so not what blind. What is it like to work with? They're not blind? They're really? not blind. They actually have the best eyesight of probably any mammal. Huh. Now, that's an interesting fact. What was it like to work with Sherla Mardick and Richard Burton from The Temptations? Oh, that was awesome. I was actually doing an internship. So there was a local play. It was, uh, it was, it was being shot over at um, Morgan. Morgan had an awesome uh, theater arts theater. And um, I got in contact with the with the producer and he said it was okay for me and my son to come work because we was we was trying to get into we was into live performances and that was a pretty big production you know the the, the theater was huge and um basically it was just part of my internship and then when we was working with richard burton he, you know of course everyone knows him from the wire he was in the white you know the, the uh, hbo long-running series uh award-winning right. series and he was actually playing in a local play at a church that we was, we was working at that was like part of our internship for film and you know for shooting live events and we actually i think he actually was in two plays that we shot if i'm not mistaken i think it was two plays that we worked with him in and he's an awesome guy wow what god is doing in your life is nothing short of amazing brother jared let's Thank give you. god a round of applause amen wonderful hallelujah oh yes 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 there is no better feeling to me than knowing that God chose little old me to be one of his instruments in order to <laughs> spread his love. I feel his power every single day of my life. How does your being one of God's instruments make you feel? It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You, you know, you always you, you always wonder, you know, when you go to church and you you hear people um, that this, this gifted and talented. And, and, of course, when you're just the audience and you're sitting out there, because I belong to a lot of churches that had outstanding choir. And it's always was people stand up. They can really do that thing. The bands were awesome. And these said, wow, they have special gifts and they, they have an opportunity to uh, to play for for the Lord every Sunday and, and whatever they doing during the week. And you kind of envy that in a way. And you just wondering, you know, what's going to be your purpose? But of course, you know, they said show patience, be patient. And someday, you know, he's going to call on you, you know, and there's going to be some things going to happen. that's going to really marvel you, you know, and I've been blown away. Millie, all those things you read Let amazes the, me. 
Let the church say amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the Sister in Christ gospel artist, Serena Green, is Bonafide Talk's feature artist for this evening. I've heard very few artists that express their love for being an instrument for God the way gospel recording artist Serena Green does it in her music. I've had the pleasure of interviewing Ree on Bonafide Talk. Such a sweet yet strong oh, yeah. presence about her rolled all up into one. Mm-hmm. Brother Jerry, I know that you're very familiar with Ree because she was working with your management on um, on a visual album in your studio. She's a great singer, isn't she, Jerry? Oh, yes, yes. I was so excited. She just saw me. I was like a... <laughs> I was like a little puppy. I was so happy. She was coming through my doorsteps. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. It was like, you know, because I call her the Beyonce of gospel. That's what I call her. That's what I nicknamed her. Exactly. <laughs> so I was excited. Exactly. Exactly. And she, and she works hard and she loves she loves God. We're yes. going to bring her on just a second just to say um, hello. Next is the artist Marie with one of her biggest hits, Your Instrument. Amen. Hey, Jerry. What's up, Ree? How you doing, love? 
I'm doing awesome. Doing really, really well. <laughs> All right, Halle Marie, Lee. you're doing some amazing things. I see you all over social media. I love you. I love, and I meant what I said earlier. I have met very few people, artists, whomever, that express their love for being an instrument for God the way that you do. And I praise God for you, okay? I know you're a busy lady. Thank you so much for chiming in to say hello to us this evening. No problem. No problem. Amen. All right, we're <laughs> gonna play another one, uh, another one of yours later on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome Bree back. Thank you, thank you for coming. Yeah. We're going into another quick commercial break, guys. Hang tight. Amen. Feel the power. Yes, yes, my pleasure, my pleasure. Of course, um, I don't know, a lot of people know that I'm living with diabetes myself. Um, I found out about it around uh, around the fall, around 2013, I think it was, and I was able to um, reverse it in just a matter of months. When You know, the, the medication itself and the eyewear and the doctor care, because there's so much that goes into, you know, living with it. And it was just so expensive, and I just determined I wasn't trying to blow money like that you know, having a young family and all. So I decided to really sure. learn about it as much as I could. But at the time, because I reversed it so quickly, I had a really good doctor and she changed my diet. I had, a, you know, she knew a lot about it. And that was my first doctor. She actually relocated to New York. So I lost her as my primary care. But at the time, um, I, I was getting better. And then I didn't, I didn't have nowhere to go to get my medicine. So basically I was like, doing okay when i got tested and i test myself everything looked good so i went great for almost two years almost two years without no problems there there are so and praise god for that you got more than decent um health care there are people that are so misinformed or uneducated about those living with the sugar dirty dirty diana or diabetes brother jerry i am grateful that you are sharing your project thank you so much thank brother you jerry. you're welcome god is good Ladies and gentlemen, yes, he is. Ladies and gentlemen, while Brother Jerry and I are away, please go ahead and get your Bibles. You know how we do. We always keep things biblically bona fide. We're going to be going over a scripture that reminds us of the importance of taking care of our health, okay? We want you to be flowing in all areas of your life. Next is flowing by gospel recording artist Serena Green, also known as Ray. <laughs> Thursday, but I'ma carry this light. You illuminate the night. 
ready. Bring you to the slave. You reveal the hidden treasures. Redirect them from the grave. Bonafide Talk, everyone. With us tonight is the phenomenal Jared Royce of Jared Royce Live on the Positive Power 21 Radio Network. Family, let's welcome Brother Jared back to Bonafide Talk. Hello, my brother. Hey, hey. Jared Royce Live worldwide, baby. Feel the power. Brother Jerry, the theme for tonight's show is 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Um, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and get your Bibles. We're going to John 3, chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Let the church say amen. 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 Brother Jerry, your documentary revolves around educating listeners and viewers about diabetes and preventative care to avoid getting diabetes. What inspired you to take on this project? Well, remember I told you guys I reversed it, <laughs> but it came back. <laughs> it came back, and it came back hard. Um, I was actually training for a 10K. My son and I had just done maybe like, I think, four races that year, I think in 2015. And um, what happened, I, was, I, was, I took on a new job, and, you know, it was training involved. You're dealing with mentorship and all that kind of stuff, different personality. And my stress was going up. You know, all this time it was going up, you know, because, you know, you're testing, you, you know, whatever. You know what it's like, job training. And stress yeah. is not your friend. It's not your good friend when you have diabetes. It's like the less stress, the better. And so with, um, I was still eating correctly because I had to, you know, I count carbs, you count everything. Because, you know, when you're working out, you got to kind of know where you are when you, before you work out 
And after you work out, so you do a lot of testing, a lot of monitoring your blood. There's a real science behind this stuff. So long story short, um, I ended up coming back pretty strong. And my doctor that I had at this time, she didn't really know how to treat a person who was was younger or and a person who, because she said I was the first person she ever had or ever witnessed that reversed it before. And so she didn't really know what to do. So she wow. put me on real heavy doses of medication. And with the working out and not, not really eating correctly with the medication, um, I kind of was like crashing and burning at the same time. Um, it, was, it was off. I was really, really sick. I was real sick. So I, I didn't know anything about endocrin- endocrinologists. You know, having a podiatrist, you know, having a because I never I wasn't down that road before. You know, I got right out of it really quick. So um, I felt like it wasn't enough education out there because I couldn't find no support until one of my podcasters told me, Jerry, you should go online. It's probably a support group on Facebook. Was she so correct? And right. basically, that's where I got all my information from, all my education. And then that made me go out there on the Internet to look for more. But to me, the best educators and, and advocates for this is, is the people who are living with, them, living with it themselves. So with all that said, the reason why I decided to do the film was because even our families don't really know that much about it. A lot of people tell you if they don't know anybody directly with it, they don't know much about it. They just know what it's called. And they don't really know what you go through because it's one of those diseases that you don't always look like the disease unless you lost a limb, you know, or, you know, you're like really, really sick. Then you look like it. But if you're treating yourself correctly and taking care of yourself, you don't look like the illness. And that's what mess with a lot of people's mind, you know, because they think that you are operating normally. like You're actually operating manually for everything that, that the body does automatically. We have to do it manually. So that's why it's so important for us to test our blood two to three times a day, which is very expensive. So that's why I did the film. Wow. (laughs) Brother Jerry, you are saving lives with this documentary. This is nothing short of ministry. Uh, These numbers are mind-blowing, such staggering statistics. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear more of the trailer, the big secret about living with Dirty Diana. Amen. We are producing this documentary to inform, educate, and save you and your loved ones from an untimely death or financial burdens. This show film is about diabetes. I call her Dirty Diana, a.k.a. Dirty. She doesn't care if you're rich or poor. She doesn't care if you're a man or a woman, a grandmother or a mother, a preacher or a teacher, or a wife or a husband. She comes when she wants to. You can be three months old or 65 years old. She doesn't care. She is worse than the devil. She gets in you like a virus and treats everybody different. She will punish you with pain, steal from you, and you will wish you were dead. Yes, she will make you think unpleasant thoughts like taking your life or eating yourself to death. She will give you a slow death or a long death. She will love you by covering you with pain. She will steal your money, your children, your husband or wife can end your life. You can't love her back. She will stay with you for better or worse in life or death. I call her Diana, but tonight I will call her Dirty. 29.1 million people in the United States have diabetes, but 8.1 million may be undiagnosed and unaware of their condition. About 1.4 million new cases of diabetes are diagnosed in the United States every year. More than one in every 10 adults who are 20 years or older has diabetes. Published February 27, 2017. Estimated 366 million people around the world have diabetes, or about 5.2% of the global population. There are 4.6 million diabetes-related deaths each year. Approximately 1.25 million American children and adults have type 1 diabetes. According to the International Diabetes Federation, IDF, 187 million of them do not even know they have diabetes. Thank you, and I hope you support this film. It's so simple. She sees you, she needs you, but it's so hard. 
Roger Jerry, prior to preparing for tonight's episode of Bonafide Talk, um, I used to believe that we in the Negro community don't go to the doctor as often as we should because we mm-hmm. think that going to the doctor makes us people, you know? Yeah. Now, I used to think that was especially the case when it came to our Negro males. But as I began to do research on this topic, I was reminded of another key factor as to why people um, don't go to the doctor as often as they should. According to the Hill.com, the many of the members in the Negro community have lost trust in the healthcare system because of the discriminatory actions against them in the healthcare system. Brother Jerry, you and I both know that there is a long list of historical data regarding our having been abused in the healthcare system. Probably the most popular catastrophe done to our people was the Tuskegee syphilis study. Mm. Do you recall the Tuskegee syphilis yes. study, Brother Jerry? Yes, it was a movie about it. Yes. Yes. Hundreds of black men without their consent were intentionally administered syphilis and denied treatment became the very embodiment the way medicine and medical research was weaponized against African Americans. What would you say to our brothers and sisters who have these legitimate concerns, Brother Jerry, about not being able to trust the health care system? Yeah, you're definitely going to have some concerns about that. And I say, you know, talk to some brothers and sisters that they can recommend a, a, a better physician to you you have a lot of african-american physicians you have a lot of asian physicians that are really really good and and indian you know so I, my doctor is actually indian so um you know her and i have a really good relationship um um but that's not my endocrinologist it was hard finding an endocrinologist but uh, he's a real good guy uh, we share a lot of interests but i say you know find somebody that, that you could build a rapport with you know you have you know once you go there a couple of times being sick you can start building a rapport you know you want a doctor to have, have really good bedside manners you know you know they, some of them don't really say Absolutely. nothing so you want to kind of establish a relationship if you can and get comfortable with them you need you need to have a, a physical exam you know especially when you start getting close to 40 45 50 you know you have to have your prostate exam sure. you need to have your heart check you need your stress test it's a lot you know, eye, te- eye exams, you name it. So, you know, it was different times now, but, you know, you got to do it. Get those teeth, Absolutely. Teeth what teeth. would you say to our brothers and sisters who feel that going to the doctor is a sign of weakness or failure? Well, I say get out of that. Well, you know, some of the brothers that, 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 that's been incarcerated, they kind of been kind of used to getting treated because they have really, really good infirmaries there. Some of the guys in the military that's coming out, they kind of used to, you know, being examined if they injure. A lot of the athletes are getting real comfortable because they used to get in a physical. So I think it's getting a lot better for the younger generation, maybe the older generation, because they were a lot closer to that period that you was just talking about. So that is right. that's a concern there. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brother Jerry, I know you have to room. If uh, you have to run, it's almost time for the Jerry Royce live show, guys. Right. Late night. I do believe, however, that a congratulations in, is in order. Brother Jerry, you celebrate four years of internet radio, right? Four years, December 21st. So we're starting a little early, you know, because last year it crept up on me the third year. And it was like, oh, my God, is that tomorrow? So I decided to start promoting it now. And get the word out, you know, stop thanking the people, you know, because you forget people, you know, as you as you move forward. But you sure. try to remember everybody. And look, I, I, congratulations to Absolutely. you. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you at the Spin Awards. And um, shout out to you. Yes. Yeah, all, awesome experience. It was. Well, I have, I'm going to dedicate this song to you and your success on Internet Radio, brother. Hold tight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Brother Jerry, how do we listen to your show tonight? Well, we actually streaming right now. We're on Spreaker Radio. You can go to Jerry Voice Live, my Facebook page. That's where everything happens. We uh, we actually have a page called Late Night with Jerry Voice Live and Positive Power Double XI is the name of the company. So if you Google Jerry Voice Live, we're real we're real Google friendly out there. So just Google Jerry Voice Live. That's R O Y C E, just like the car, the Rolls Royce. So Jerry Voice Live, or you can go out to Positive Power Twenty One. Our website is positivepower21.org. Okay. 
So come on out and check us out. We got Brother awesome Jerry, podcasters. Beautiful. Brother Jerry, it has been a pleasure working with you on tonight's episode of Bonafide Amen. Talk. I know you have to run. I'll be sure to tune in to your show once I'm done here. Have a good show, Brother Jerry. We'll see you late, man, okay? Hey, Amen. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. God bless you. Feel the power, everybody. Feel the power. God is good. In closing, the demonic things that have happened to our people in the healthcare system are deplorable. Some of you may say, Falana, you've never been a victim of racism in the healthcare system. Well, you are wrong. Yes, I have. On a larger scale than many of you think because you don't know my story. However, but what I learned from those experiences is that I've had many more good experiences in the healthcare system than I have bad. Family, we cannot allow deeds of a few evil people to deter us from what's ours. Amen? Your chances of having poor health is still higher if you don't go to the doctor regularly. The devil ain't going nowhere. He's fulfilling his purpose that John 10.10 10 talks about. He is out to steal kill and destroy how we defeat the enemy is by also keeping in mind about the amount of good that the healthcare system has done for our people if you don't have insurance all is not lost there are agencies that are available for persons who cannot afford health insurance by or needing of medical coverage it will take a little work to find out who they are but god wants to bless our lives but we must put in the work if you don't have health insurance a place to look online is healthcare dash information dash guide dot com slash no dash health dash insurance dot html faith without works is dead people that ain't me talking that's bible let's stop making excuses in fact family is time out for the excuses we are much more educated than that let's watch out on a diet, drink plenty of water, exercise regularly, and go check up. Just go get our checkups regular, okay? All right, guys, I'm out. You guys know my motto, brother Jerry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, as always. Amen. Keep God first in your walk, baby, and that's bona fide talk. <laughs> Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.